This is Ben from Life in 360, and in this video, I'm going to teach you how to make your own virtual tour, regardless of the 360 camera you own. I'm here in Vancouver, I've got an amazing office space behind me, and we're going to shoot this bad boy using my Xiaomi camera. However, you can use any 360 camera. I've discovered this amazing software called Cupix, and it's completely free, and it will allow you to host your 360 photos into a virtual tour, as well as create a 3D render of the entire space. The software does everything. I think this is going to blow your mind. So here are my weapons of choice. I have a nice cheap 360 camera, the Xiaomi Mi Gia Mi Sphere. It's an excellent option. I will put a link to this down in the description to where you can find it for around the $200 mark. This is the Manfrotto Mini Pixie Tabletop Tripod. I've got my favorite Manfrotto selfie stick here. This is a two-in-one selfie pole. And finally, we have an adapter which is going to allow us to put the selfie stick onto the tripod. So step one is you want to remove tripod from your camera if it has a tripod and we're going to put that onto the selfie stick. Now for the bottom end we're going to undo this and look you can use any selfie stick you want this is one I'd recommend but you don't have to use it. I'm going to put this adapter on here. I got this on Amazon for a couple of dollars so I'll put a link to that as well as all of these in the description and then I'm putting my tripod onto there. I think you guys are going to be amazed at how little the presence will be of this setup in the final photos. These legs are only small. Look at that. And then, especially when we extend it so far out, and this is one of the longest selfie sticks that I've found, it goes almost to eye level, which is perfect for virtual tours. You want them roughly at eye level. So there we go, look, that's freestanding on its own, and that's very secure, because this is well-made aluminium, both the selfie stick and the tripod, so you can trust that it's not going to fall over, especially if you're indoors with no wind. With this approach, I've chosen to set it up like this because I'm going to go and hide in my photos. You can actually just hold the selfie stick like this, and then you'll end up in the bottom of the shot if you like, but this is a good way to do it if your camera has a self timer like the Xiaomi has or if you can activate it via your phone. This tripod has a leveler, you just press down that button and you can adjust the tilt of the head. You will want to definitely make sure that is dead level before you go ahead with your tour just to avoid it tipping over. I find a good way to do this is to see how straight it looks from all angles from a distance and already I'm seeing it's a little bit off tilt so I'm going to adjust it this way little bit more. Okay, it's looking good this way. However, it could look very different from this side. Let's have a look. Okay, yeah, just a tiny bit this way now. I think we have a vertical selfie stick. MeSphere goes on, Wi-Fi goes on. I'm going to connect to my app and then I'm gonna go run and hide and take my first photo. Let's do it. Here we have the preview and I am hiding down the hallway there. So let's take our first photo. So that's our first shot taken. Now I'm going to move the camera up about a meter or so. I think you should just use common sense and whenever you see the environment has changed significantly, then move it up that far. You don't need to do it every few inches. I would say maybe three to six feet at a time. So I've got it here right now and I want the next step of my tour to be about here. I think enough has changed within those six feet to warrant this next photo. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing again and go hide. When you're walking through doorways, you'll wanna shoot a few extra shots so later on the 3D tour can be nicely pieced together. At the moment, you can see this is the door right it might think that that is wallpaper or a painting, so that's why we're going to take a few. I'm going to take one here, one here, and one here. I'd say it maybe a few inches apart, just so the software can really determine that 3D space. If creating a 3D map is something that really excites you, like it does me, you wanna get as many photos as possible in your room, so it can then determine the distance later on between everything in the room and it can create that interactive map. If you only have one photo, it's going to be less accurate. So the more the better. Look, you don't have to overshoot it, but in a room like this, I'd say you'd want at least five different photos in the different corners of the room, just so those depth points can be determined. All right, this room is done, so now let's head over to the edit suite and piece these bad boys together. I can never resist the opportunity to do a bit of color correction, so I've put these 26 bad boys through Adobe Camera Raw in Photoshop. 
So you may want to do the same in either Photoshop Lightroom or whatever your color corrector of choice is. As you can see, I've only done a subtle grade, only because the image was well taken to begin with. I'm really just bringing up the shows a little bit, bringing down the highlights just a tad and boosting that saturation and warmth a tiny little bit. You do need to be honest about the space you're representing, so don't over color correct it. Next, head to cubics.com, sign in with your Facebook account and bam, we're at the dashboard already. Up in the top left, hit new 3D tour, enter the details of your space, upload your photos and let it load. Look, this is not going to be fast. It's going to take up to a few hours depending on how many photos you take so go outside and take some silly tiny planet photos while you're waiting and we're done what we see in front of us isn't really that impressive right well wait for this shit this is gonna be so cool I hit floor plan and here we have our virtual tour on the right but check this out on the left this is an actual floor plan of the building I was shooting and you can see it's picked up the scale of everything it's picked up where the little rooms are to be honest I could have done a much better job at shooting to really get the depth of each little crevice of this space but I just wanted to give you guys a simple example but our virtual tour is completely stitched so we can go from point to point and now look around and it's automatically been done for us this is super cool. How long did that take guys? Not long at all. And you can see that all of our points have been automatically detected about where the photo was taken within this environment. Now wait for this, this is going to be even cooler still. We go into 3D texture mode and look at that. We can see the walls, we can see all the details of the space on this 3D map. How cool is this shit? This is amazing. I can see how this would be really handy for architects or anyone working in construction to get a super in-depth feel of a space. See how I'm just moving this whole space around? This is massive. Dun, 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 dun. Woo. Now I'm gonna add some text into the space. Let's say Ben is awesome, yeah. So there you can see we've added 3D text. When people walk around our walkthrough, Ben is awesome is going to show up in that spot of our virtual tour. There are a bunch of other cool 3D elements you can add. I won't go into them now, maybe in another tutorial. So next we wanna go into the publisher and here we have the preview of what your client would potentially look at. They'd see Ben is awesome and they'd be like, hey, if that guy's awesome, I must do business with him. It just looks super professional and I've essentially done this with a $200 budget, just the cost of the camera and the basic accessories. But honestly, my mind is blown about how cool this tech is. Now you just hit the publish slider and our virtual tour is now online. We can copy the URL. So when we open up a new tab, this will be the URL that we send people to so they can access our virtual tour. And here we have it guys, our end result. It is looking absolutely awesome. Cool guys, I hope this was helpful. Cupix is an awesome free software, so get onto it. If you're into creating virtual tours, you wanna do interiors, exteriors, use this software because it's going to be amazing and it's free and easy and it's all online and you'll be able to send it to clients or whoever wants to view it pretty easily. So it's definitely something I would recommend. If you're looking to pick up a 360 camera, I'll put a link to this one down in the description. It's my current camera of choice for the $200 price range. It's excellent, it delivers in so many ways, so it's excellent for virtual tours. Again, I'll put links to my full setup down in the description. Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below or and hit the like button for more awesome 360 content coming really soon. Hey, let me know if you like this and if you wanna learn more about virtual tours, because maybe I'll make some more videos that go into some more in-depth features of creating virtual tours. I think this will be an awesome way to earn money with your 360 camera, so it's something worth learning and exploring because it means you'll be bringing money in which will further your 360 adventures until next time keep capturing your world in 360 this has been ben you can follow me on instagram at ben claremont for tiny planets and all kinds of wacky 360 stuff and i'll see you in the next video